inequalities with a variable in the denominator. So we're going to have a look at more inequalities that are going to end up being quadratic, but these ones are a bit special. Let's have a look at an example. We have 1 over x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1. And you might be thinking it might be okay to times both sides by the denominator, to cancel out with the denominator, but because there's an unknown in the denominator, we don't know if this denominator is going to be positive or negative, which means when we multiply both sides by it, we don't know if we should keep the inequality um, being a less than or equal to, or we should flip it and make it a greater than or equal to. But there's a an easy fix, um, so we know uh, we can keep the inequality the same, and that's to multiply both sides by the denominator squared. So in this case, we're going to multiply this side by x minus 1 squared. I'm going to multiply this side by x minus 1 squared. And the reason for that is that if you square uh, any number, you get a positive number, whether it be started off as positive or started off as negative. And what happens here is the denominator and the square cancel out. So on this left-hand side, we're just left with x minus 1 times 1, which is just x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1 times x minus 1 squared. So let's expand that out. So we're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we can bring everything to one side. And usually we like to keep the x squared term positive. So we'll bring everything to the right-hand side. So we're going to bring everything to the right-hand side. So we're still going to have x squared. Now minus 2x minus another x is minus 3x. And 1 uh, plusing 1 to both sides is going to give us a plus 2 there. And we'll just rewrite it so everything is on the left-hand side. And when we switch the sides with an inequality, we also switch the inequality around, or read it backwards. And now we can go ahead and factorize, and it's just like a normal quadratic inequality. So we're just looking for two numbers that multiply to 2, and add up to minus 3, so it's going to be minus 2 and minus 1. So we can go ahead and graph this. So we know the x-intercepts are at 1 and 2. And our y-intercept is just at minus 2 times minus 1, which is at 2. So we can go ahead and graph this. And the quadratic inequality is saying where is it greater than zero? So where is it above? Greater than or equal to zero? So it's above the x-axis, which is here and here. So we know our answer is going to be when x is less than one. Whoops. When x is less than 1, or when x is greater than or equal to 2. So you'll notice that I didn't put an equal sign with the 1, even though it was equal to, because of our original question, saying we had to make note that x could never equal 1 because we'd, uh, we'd end up dividing by 0. So you should, if you want to be extra careful when you look at the question and see that, you, should, you could make note that x can't equal one at the start, so you know for your final answer, if it was to include it, you'd, you'd leave it out. We'll look at one more example. Let's go with 4x plus 7 over x minus 2 is less than minus 3. So here, let's make note straight away that x cannot equal 2, because then we'll be dividing by 0. So we're going, we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the denominator squared because we have a variable in the denominator. So the square and the denominator will cancel out. So we're going to have x minus 2 all times 4x plus 7 is less than minus 3. While we're here, we'll expand out this, this bracket here. So we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. Let's expand this one out. So we'll get 4x squared 
plus 7x minus 8x minus 14 is less than minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 12. Take everything to one side, keeping the x squared term positive. So we'll take everything to the left hand side. So we're going to add 3x squared to both sides. So we're going to get 7x squared. 7x minus 8x is minus x. Minus another 12x is minus 13x. Then we have minus 14. We're going to add 12. So we're going to get minus 2 is less than 0. So we end up with this quadratic inequality, uh, which we can solve like normal. So we're going to go 7x, 7x, all over 7. We'll times 7 and 2 to get minus 14. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to minus 14 and add up to minus 13. So that's just going to be minus 14 and positive 1. Then we can factorize out a 7 in that first bracket. So we'll get x minus 2, 7x plus 1, all over 7 is less than 0, and those 7s will cancel. So we've just got x minus 2 and 7x plus 1. So if these never factorize properly, you could always use the quadratic equation to get your, your intercepts. But these ones are factorizing nicely. And let's go ahead and do a little graph. So we know the x-intercepts at 2 and minus a seventh. And the y-intercept is going to be at minus 2. It's concave up because x squared term is positive. You get something like that. And it's asking where are all the values uh, less than the 0, so below the x-axis. So it's all these values here. So we can go ahead and say that x has to be between minus a seventh and 2. And we have no problem uh, worrying about our initial x can't equal 2 because it's only less than 2, not equal to it. Thank you.